Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. Welcome to my <laughs> snap out of it. Okay. Hey, y'all. Welcome to my first YouTube video and my YouTube channel. Please ignore my microphone right now because it's literally my phone. Um, I don't have a microphone and I don't like the sound that comes with the camera. So we're working with this until I invest in like maybe a pocket microphone that I can like clip onto me. Um, so for starters, I'm really nervous about this. Ew, you can see my back in the mirror. Hold on. I don't like that. Okay. Sorry. I had to fix that because I didn't like the reflection of me because I have bad posture. So I'm kind of iffy on continuing to do this. I just thought I would post one video and see how it does, which obviously doesn't make sense because it it's not going to do good the first video. You have to be consistent. Anyways, um, more people, people nowadays obviously like to watch podcasts. I don't know if they really watch YouTube anymore. So that's where I'm stumped. So maybe this could be like a YouTube slash podcast type of thing. But I don't know. I just don't know. Like maybe I'll post a vlog tomorrow and who knows, whatever. We're going to get into the video. It's a Q&A. If you don't know me, my name is Brooke, and, well, obviously you know me because, yeah, well, not like that, but the only way people will know to watch this video is because I'm going to post to go watch my video, and so I assume the people watching are my followers, but if you don't know who I am, my name is Brooke, I'm 21 years old, I live in Florida, I'm from Dallas, and the solar eclipse just happened. Anyways. We're going to get into this q and I, I asked people on Instagram and Snapchat to ask me questions about what y'all would want to know. And so I'm going to answer those. They are on my iPad. So if I'm looking down, just bear with me. I'm trying to think if I want to do rapid fire, rapid, rapid fire, rap and fire. Is it rapid fire or rapid? I think it's rapid. Rapid fire. That doesn't sound right. Do I write? <sighs> Do I want to go really fast answering these questions or do I want to explain? I guess I'll explain some and then just yes or no on others. What is your favorite part about living in Florida? My favorite part about living in Florida is probably the beach, obviously. Um, the only thing that sucks in the area that I live in is there's not really many people my age, so it's kind of hard to find friends, and I'm also not really one to go out of my way to find friends because I'm really content with myself, but I also get really lonely, and I would love to have friends, so that's kind of the problem that I run into here because this is more of like a retirement town, if that makes sense, so I feel like I would enjoy it a lot more and enjoy a lot more things here if I had friends here, like a group, if that makes sense. Next question is, how was your recruitment process for playing collegiate soccer? So I know that the rules are a lot different now, but whenever I was being recruited, I started getting recruited in eighth grade and I got my first offer my freshman year of high school and my team, we did, a, we went to a lot of showcases and stuff. So it was definitely stressful because I did not like calling coaches. I did not like emailing them. I did not like playing in front of them. Um, but obviously you have to do that in order to get recruited. So I did a lot of that and I would say that it went really smooth. I had a lot of interest one because they would watch me play. And two, I had a really good support system like coaches. Um, I had a lot of coaches that were investing in me and, telling the college coaches good things about me so that was nice I committed my freshman year to play at University of Arkansas which was fun but short-lived <laughs> I quit Ooh, this is a good question was it a hard adjustment being content alone again after a long relationship that was the biggest thing that I struggled with was to answer your question, yes, that was the biggest thing that I struggled with was going from being with somebody for such a long time, talking to them every day, um, having that person you can confide in, and then them going away. That was really hard for me. Um, but I think if I could go back, because I did not handle it well at all, 
like after the fact um I turned to a lot of different like I did I think that what I would do would if I could go back and change it I would have surrounded myself with my friends on a more day-to-day basis and not just surrounding myself with them when we're going out and going to drink because that was kind of my outlet and I felt really lonely on the other days and I felt everything and if I had just surrounded myself with my friends more who wanted me to be around them more but I purposely would lock myself in my room and I wouldn't want to hang out with them I wouldn't want to go get ice cream I wouldn't want to go to church with them Um, I only wanted to do I only wanted to party and obviously when I was partying I wouldn't remember everything the next day so I couldn't really remember how great my friends were so it was definitely a really hard adjustment and if I could go back and do it again I would have 100% surrounded myself with them more daily than occasionally. How do you know when it's time to end things? Um... I feel like it just depends on the situation, but also if you're kind of questioning if you should end things or not, then I think you maybe should, if that makes sense, because if that was really your person, ending things would never even cross your mind, and if y'all are going through a hard time, still ending things wouldn't come, wouldn't cross your mind. It would be like, okay, how are we going to work through this? So that's how I would go about it. Would I ever move to Hawaii? Now, this is a question I get a lot, and it's definitely something that I would do. I think I just struggle really hard with the fact that I wouldn't be an hour and a half plane ride away from my parents. I would be like an eight, and I don't want to be that far away from my family. And so I told myself I would move to Florida first, see how I liked it, see how I could do with being away from them. Clearly not doing a great job because I'm there all the time. Um... But it's something that I do eventually want to do, whether it's for six months, a year, four years. I don't know. But I do eventually want to. Advice on how to navigate life after four years together and an engagement. So I think the I think the best advice that I can give is, number one, whenever I was going, whenever I was going through it, I really just had to depend on Jesus and I didn't do that in the beginning and it just led to more heartbreak and um, I turned to things that were just a band-aid over the bullet hole, cue Morgan Wallen, Um, but in the long run it didn't help me. So I would really just turn to Jesus and submit it to him. Then also if you're not with that person anymore, there's a reason and knowing that God removed them out of your life for a reason that you couldn't see and he was protecting you. And as hard as it probably is to understand that and wrap your head around that, God knows everything and he knows he was hearing conversations you weren't hearing. He was seeing things you weren't seeing. Um, He knew things you didn't know and he knew that you deserved somebody that could give you everything that your person couldn't at the time. So I think just having that mindset and knowing like your life isn't going to end because someone walked out of your life. If anything, you get to start all over, which is scary, but it's also so fun and so exciting. And it's such, I wish at the time I was going through it that I could understand that there was so much more ahead and my life didn't just completely end because of a boy. So I would just have that mindset, give it to God and just fully trust that there's a reason that it all happened. And I know it's so cliche. And when people used to tell me that I would literally want to cuss them out and tell them to kick rocks, but it really is true. (laughs) Do you ever reminisce on the life you would have had in college playing soccer? So I don't regret quitting, but I also do miss it. If that makes sense. Like I know it was good that I quit, but also it was a part of my life for so long and it was a dream of mine to play college soccer and part of me is like if I didn't let other things affect my mindset at the time, would I still be playing? Probably. But also I know that it all happened for a reason and um, I do definitely miss it 
but I really only missed the games because I hated practice. I hated lift. <laughs> um, but I do think about it, but also I just try and not to really sulk around on it because God led me down a different path for a different reason and I'm still figuring it out. And I'm honestly glad because I got to learn a lot of adult things a lot sooner than I would have if I stayed in college. So there's definitely been pros and cons. (laughs) Have you and Spencer kissed? Guys, I wish that I could tell y'all this whole story and I wish that I could tell y'all it happened, but no, me and Spencer have never kissed. Biggest advice on moving into the college life. I honestly am not the person to ask because I handled college very terribly, but the way that I wish I handled it was go in be confident, be yourself, be open to meeting new people. Um, don't do things just to fit in. Get out of your comfort zone, but also don't do things that will not align with your morals because um, then that just causes you to kind of lose yourself. And it's okay if you lose yourself. You can always come back. I lost myself and I'm back, but... um it would save a lot of heartbreak. Maybe not heartbreak, but it would save a lot of, I don't know. I feel like you can prevent a lot of things if you stay true to who you are and who and where your morals lie. But also you're going to college, you're experiencing freedom for the first time. So honestly, just do the best that you can and you're going to make mistakes. Don't feel like you have to be perfect. You're learning a whole new different schedule. You're learning how you're getting all this freedom. You're not having your parents up your butt about studying and your professors don't really care because they're getting paid no matter what. Um, so it's really all about holding yourself accountable, staying motivated. Don't lose yourself, which is kind of hard, but try not to do that. But if you do, that's okay. And everyone is still going to love and support you. But um, yeah, that's how I would, that's how I wish I went into college. I wish I didn't go in with such a, like I I told myself it was going to be a certain way and it totally knocked me on my butt. So I would go in very open-minded and confident, but humble. Oh, this is good. I played soccer all of high school and constantly comparing my body to then. How do you not do that and accept your new body? So this is something that I really do struggle with because growing up, I could eat Whatever I really wanted, which I didn't really do that. My mom had me on a strict diet, but towards my like junior, senior year of high school and freshman year of college, honestly, I was eating whatever, Um, but I was running all the time and running off everything that I'd eaten and could drink sodas, whatever. And it never affected my body because I was working out so much. Obviously, you can't do that now when you've quit a sport. And what I've had to learn is like, I will never again in my life be running seven miles a day. I will, at high intensity, I will never be doing the amount of agility that I was doing. I will never have to be lifting the way that I was lifting throughout high school and college. Um, So you kind of just have to give yourself grace. And I mean, you can continue to work out like that, but I mean, your body, like that's just a lot of overworking your body when you don't really need to. So... I've been struggling a lot with that recently because I'm like, I just, it sucks because I can't do what I used to be able to do. Um, But I think knowing that that chapter of your life has ended and you're starting a new chapter, um, that's just a part of growing up. You're going to grow up. Your body's going to change. You're going to get wrinkly. Your hair is going to turn gray. You might lose weight. You might gain weight. It literally doesn't matter as long as you're comfortable in your own skin. And for me personally, if I'm not comfortable in my own skin, um, I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to work out. I'm going to start eating healthier. If I'm comfortable and confident and I don't, and I'm okay with where my body's at, I won't work out. I won't eat healthier. I'll do whatever. I think it's just all up to what your body's telling you and what your 
mental is telling you. But again, it's really hard not to compare yourself to the way you looked when you're 17, 16, 15. Shoot, I hit puberty and like freshman year of high school, I think. I was a late bloomer, I think. Um, 14, 15 years old. And now I'm 21. Obviously, I'm going to have a little pooch. Okay, I didn't have one when I was 14 years old. Obviously, I wasn't a woman. Now I'm a woman. Oh, what do you, like, my metabolism was so high my whole life growing up. I had an eight pack. Now I have to actually work out to have an eight pack. What are you talking about? Um, And I'm still working out and I still don't have an eight pack. So it's just unrealistic expectations to hold yourself to because you're not that person you were back in high school and you're not working out the way that you needed to. You're not working out a way, you're not working out to play a 90 minute soccer game, high intensity, physical contact. That's just not realistic. Um, so I think just give yourself grace and listen to your body. That's how I cope with it. How tall are you? I am five, five, a little shorty. Have you gone out on dates with anyone since your last relationship? I have, I've gone on dates. Yes. (laughs) Some good, some bad, but I've gone. And it's really weird the first time you go to. Let me tell you that. It's really weird. Because you're like, you're a stranger. I don't remember the last time I ate. And it's just so awkward. Like, we're about to sit down and eat when I don't even know you. And I have to eat in front of you. That's so embarrassing. I don't care if y'all say that's annoying when girls get embarrassed to eat in front of guys. I do. I really do. I don't want to eat in front of you. <laughs> I don't know why. I literally don't know why, but I hate it. I hate it so much. How many sizes did you go up in boobs? So I did get a boob job, if y'all didn't know. And I was an A cup. I didn't even wear bras. Didn't even bother. And now I got fitted at Victoria's Secret and I can fit in a C cup and a D cup. So two sizes, three sizes, pick your poison, whatever the... Depends on the day. I will say, though, my left boob is higher than my right because my skin cancer that I had, I had to get a surgery right here. And it, with the scar, with the way they stitched the scar, it did, like, automatically lift my left breast. So I'm having to massage that down a lot. How did you stay so strong in the hardest parts of your life? In the hardest part of your... How did you stay so strong in the hardest part of your life? I didn't. I literally didn't. I was crumbling. I was not okay. I was not strong. Um, I guess I faked it a lot on social media, um, which also made things worse for me because I felt like I didn't really have an outlet because I didn't want to talk to my parents about how sad I was. I didn't want to talk to my friends about how sad I was. I mean, obviously I did here and there, but it, I was sad all the time so I didn't want to constantly be talking to them about it so there was that that I could I didn't really get an outlet for I didn't want to post it all over social media I did here and there but not all the time because I couldn't handle the comments that would be negative because I was just in a really fragile mindset so I had to fake it a lot of the times most of the times I was sleeping all day um I wouldn't go outside until it was time to go out to the bars I lost so much weight and I wasn't eating, which if you go back and look at my videos from two years ago, you could tell. Um, I had no energy during soccer practices. I had to sit out because I felt like I was going to pass out. I would literally drink the night before and wake up and have to go to a lift. But since I wasn't eating anything, I would wake up and I would literally still feel drunk. Um, So I wouldn't say that I was really strong. I think it took me a really long time to, I also just wouldn't, I made up in my mind that I was not going to move on and I was going to sulk in how sad I was and just constantly think about it. And that really affected me. So I wasn't very strong. And if I could go back and do it again, I would. But yeah, I I just faked it. I faked it a lot. And I wasn't a good faker either because you could totally tell in my videos that I was so sad. Can we have a hint about who your crush is? You can. It's a boy, obviously. Um, what 
something vague. He has brown hair. He's It's a boy and he has brown hair. <laughs> what advice would you give someone who isn't confident? I think what helps me a lot is knowing that God created you so intentionally and whatever insecurity you have it's something that Jesus loves about you and somebody who's going to be in your life who's going to be your partner forever whether it's your girlfriend or your boyfriend um they're going to love you the way that Jesus loved you and or loves you and they're not going to see your insecurities and be like ew they're going to see him and accept them and love you for them and so I think that if that's something that's keeping you from being confident because you're insecure about certain things the right people in your life aren't going to judge you or not like you for your flaws um also something that helps me a lot as well is every single person has insecurities there is some there's some there's something in everybody's life that makes them not 100 percent confident and I have insecurities. My teeth are like my biggest insecurity because why does it look like I have a snaggle tooth? Why are there gaps in my teeth? My nose is my other biggest insecurity because I think it's massive, but everybody I know is like, oh no, it's not big, but I think it's big. Um, Another thing that I'm really insecure about recently is I started developing hormonal acne because I went through a lot this past year and it really affected me and it started screwing up my skin and... Um, and I've never had acne in my life, so I'm like so afraid to go outside without makeup on. I'm so afraid to have somebody stare at me for too long because then they're going to notice it because I've never dealt with it before. But I just have to remind myself like, okay, it's literally acne. You're clean. You wash your face. You can't help it. You're doing everything in your power to help it. If somebody's going to hold acne against you, they do not deserve to be in your life. So, um... I have my insecurities. Everybody, no matter how perfect they look, no matter how gorgeous they are, no matter how little their waist is, no matter how big their boobs are, no matter how perfect their side profile is, they have an insecurity. And there's something that's keeping them from being 100% confident. Also, another thing, if you can't tell, this is something I've struggled with. So I've had to really help myself with this is um, you're your biggest critic you are the only person that sees yourself every single day constantly you are able to pick out every little flaw about yourself nobody's looking at you that much nobody's zooming in on your pictures and seeing oh that's a pimple right there oh you have a gap in your teeth oh her nose is big in this photo nobody's doing that or at least i don't do that and i've never really seen anybody else do that either so you just have to remember you're your worst critic you're the one that has to see yourself every day and I get tired of seeing myself all the time. Sometimes I'm like, why am I even doing TikTok? Because I have to look at myself constantly. And it's so annoying. But just remember that. That is how I stay confident. I obviously have my days, though. I'm not confident every day. But I also get over it. I'm like, womp womp, okay, whatever. You look bloated today. So does every other woman at least once a month. <laughs> so hope that helps. What do you do if you want to get back with your ex, but your friends all hate him because he did you wrong? Well, honestly, there is nothing your friends or your family can tell you that's going to make you not get back with him. Um, It's going to take you to learn and it's going to hurt and it's going to suck. Maybe, just maybe he proves everyone wrong and he is great and treats you great and he apologizes and he really shows the change but you also have to go in knowing that there's a possibility that he's going to take advantage of the grace you have extended him and wrong you again because that's the nature of boys is they get one chance and they know that they can do it again because you extended grace so you would you should have you should probably prepare for that um if there's if your friends and your parents don't like him, those are the people in your life that love you the most and there is a reason and they know your worth and 
your judgment can be clouded so much when you love somebody. So the people around you are level-headed, thinking clearly, because this person isn't somebody they love, but they love you, and they want what's best for you. So I would honestly listen to them. It will save you a lot of heartbreak and a lot of emotional damage. But if you don't care, then honestly nothing that they say is going to keep you from getting back so I guess you you'll just have to do it and find out but I hope you know your worth and if somebody wronged you once especially at our young age their frontal lobe isn't developed until they're like 72 that's not true but basically um it's a possibility of it happening again and you don't deserve that and I think that's what your friends and family are trying to tell you But good luck, queen, and I hope that he doesn't do that to you again. Are you and your ex still friends? (laughs) No, we are not. Will you ever give a ex story? So I'm assuming you're asking like a story time on why we broke up. Um, no, I won't. Um... No, that part of my life is over. I don't really see a point in bringing it back up and talking about it when it's been over. Also, it's not just my story to tell. So, no, I will not. Okay, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this YouTube video. Let me know in the comments what more y'all would like to see. Like, I made a vlog in Hawaii, but I didn't post it because I just got my camera back and it had some of the clips. But should I still post that or should I do more videos like this? But I feel like this is giving podcast vibes. So I don't really know. I'm stumped. I don't even have an intro for the YouTube videos. Like, that's going to be embarrassing. Are we just going to hop right into this video? I guess so. Um, But anyways, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Love you guys.